Okay, what has gone wrong with English cricket? Now, the defeat to Scotland, I think, sums up where England are right now in all formats of the game. The confidence is shot. Um, the media circus around them is, is, I think, creating more pressure. And I think there's issues with selection and coaching. Uh, we have to go back to 2005 to reassess where England went wrong. They had a golden generation of players from about 2003 to 2013. That was a 10 year, a decade of development and then being one of the best sides in the world. What happened in that period, 2005, was ECB sold the rights to Sky, which um, has caused viewership at both grounds and the TV to fall year on year. Fans feel priced out. Um, it doesn't help when the ECB chairman uh, comes out with statements saying that young kids aren't interested in the game, and clearly they are. I was as a young kid. I used to love watching the test matches and one day is on, on free-to-air TV. I used to love watching... I watched all the Ashes series apart from the first test because I was on holiday. I watched every test series from 1990, I would say seven, until 2005. I watched every single England test series for eight years. Um, that was played in England on the TV without fail. And I was a kid and I loved the game and I still love the game now. I still love the sport now. But I refuse to give Rupert Murdoch any money. Um, I, I refuse to get Sky, I refuse to read his publications. Um, that's part of the problem, is they're taking away the accessibility to young people from all walks of life and all backgrounds. They take away accessibility by putting it behind a paywall, and that is everything that keeps coming up. On every other YouTuber who follows cricket or covers cricket, every um, forum, every news website, in the, in, the, in, the, in the subscriber comments when you can have an account and, and place your views on, on a news article 95% want it back on free to wear TV now the BBC will be getting some free to wear cricket in the next couple of years which is great, it's still in the distance it's not here now, it's part of the problem getting young people to play the game, this is another issue with Jim, Jimmy Anderson, he's been playing injured for quite some time, this shoulder injury that has now come out um, yeah They've overused him to the point where his body's breaking down. He's 35. He will not be around forever. He's going to probably retire within the next 12 months. Stuart Broad, again, because Anderson's clearly been bowling injured, he's having to bowl more as well. They've both been decent with the bat in the past. They're both shot with the bat now. Their confidence has gone batting because they're too knackered after bowling uh, uh, a lot of overs. Um, and then some of the young players like Bess and Curran and, and, and Josh Butler, who's been brought back into the side, uh, in the, in the te Pakistan Test Series, those players are the ones digging England out of a hole because the upper order has collapsed yet again, and Joe Root's batting is not good enough. As Cook is getting out cheaply a lot, is it Stoneman? Is it Jennings? Who are they gonna? Who's opening the batting? Moen Ali's not in the side at the moment. Uh, ben Stokes. Not, we've got too many all rounders. Now, that's not a problem. I'm not saying that's a problem having all rounders. You can do spin or fast pace or medium pace. It's not a problem. Mixing your bowling attack up and having that bowling depth, but Chopping and changing the batting lineup from test to test is not helping these players develop. Give them a run in the side for a couple of test series at home or a couple of test series away. And if after then they need a break, rotate them. Don't drop them, rotate them. There's a different way of doing it. The way the press releases and the press are covering it is these players have been dropped. No, they've been rotated. That's going to shatter their confidence. Then you've got a question, okay, these are young players, so they're still developing their skill set because even experienced players can always learn. I've seen experienced players develop their game in the IPL or in the short formats of the game after test cricket and learn new skills or develop their skills. So to say that as soon as you're a professional or a perfect player is it's wrong. Coaching is, needs to be assessed here. The coaching staff at England need, is not right because they have not won an away test match for two years. And they're now starting to have a wobble on, on, on British shores. That, that defeat to Scotland, okay, you technically you class it as an away defeat because it's played in Scotland, but it's still in the UK. A lot of the Scottish players play in the English county setup, be it in the top two tiers of county or in the lower levels, uh, semi pro level. They still play in the English system. And they did a number on England. And England had, you guessed it, a batting collapse. This has happened far too regularly with England. That Pakistan team they played was a very inexperienced, young, developing team. The first test match, Pakistan embarrassed England. Okay, England embarrassed Pakistan in the second. But the weather conditions played in their favour and they were the bowling side. 
in the first innings. I, I don't think batting first always is the best idea, especially early on in an English summer. If that was in August, you want to bat first. May, you want to bowl first. So if Pakistan are putting it to bat first, they would have won that test match as well. Simple. Um, but honestly, I think England have some serious problems. That, that test win over Pakistan is covering up some cracks. Anderson may not be fit for India. Depends how serious this shoulder injury is. He's clearly been favouring his arm for a while. I don't know what shoulder it is, but he's been playing injured for a long time. That's not good. That's not good. That's not good player management by the coaching staff. It's also just worrying about bowling depth. If your key bowlers are getting injured or being bowled too much, they break down. Now Jimmy Anderson hasn't got to be one of the greatest bowlers in history by not pushing himself. But there's got to come a point where he's got to go right. And the coaches will go, we need him to still be effective for at least another 12 months. Are we misusing him? And that's where coaching comes in. Stoneman and Jennings having issues getting out cheaply. Cook getting out cheaply. Cook's an experienced player, but he's, I think, shot as well. I think he's a little bit burnt out. I think the way the press have handled it hasn't helped. But I think Joe Root's not the right guy to be captain. I don't think Ben Stokes is the right guy to be vice-captain. But unfortunately, because of the way the dynamic has worked with the Zing side, they keep chopping and changing experienced players in and out and putting young players in. They get loss of confidence. They get dropped and they should be rotated and kept in the elite squad, but rotated around and gives every young player's experience, blood them in and have them shadowing a more experienced player. And they don't seem to be doing that. They seem to be thrown under a bus. They have a bad couple of games. They're thrown under the bus for a good 12 months and then they're brought back in. The cycle would repeat itself. That is not the way to develop test openers, middle order batsmen, lower order batsmen, bowlers, all rounders, fielders, quick keepers. Bairstow and Butler are both inside. They're both quick keepers. How the hell does that work having two quick keepers in the side? That makes no sense. Selection is a problem. The ECB structures are an issue as well. That's a different kettle of fish. Um, but the national side, the pressure's on them. I think most players don't want this 100 ball format, but because they're centrally contracted, they have to say yes to it, which is a problem. I want these players to speak their mind on that. I would, I would think most players would be against it. And I think coaching's an issue. I honestly think coaching's not quite right. These players, there's a lot of injuries, um, a lot of hamstrings, a lot of side strains in training, not in games. The press um, hasn't helped, and the match fixing allegations. Okay, they've quietened down, but that's got to be weighing on the group as well. And Ben Stokes is in discretions. Uh, and some of the other indiscretions by some of the other players, maybe more minor, have, give cricket a bad image again. So it's an interesting one. Uh, many things to discuss. But I want to hear from cricket fans what you feel has gone wrong with England. Um, is it is it the fact that the TV rights were taken away to, to Sky? And that's denied a lot of young people the ability to engage with the game like I did when I was a kid between 97 and 2005. I watched every single England Test Series at home uh, between 97 and 2005 without fail. I, I used to love watching Test Cricket and then watching the One Day Series as well. I used to love watching on Channel 4. The late, the late days of the BBC, the days of Channel 4. I used to love watching it on, on free to air. I, I learned a lot. And I, I actually still love the game now. But sadly, it's been taken away. Um, and put behind a paywall, and the money goes through from Murdoch's dirty pockets. So that could be a problem. But I want to hear from your your thoughts. Um, and I'll be interested to see your feedback. Thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe. Place your comments below. And I'll have some more videos for you soon.